about the star? Uh, can you please uh, repeat your name? I don't want to pronounce Rain. it. Sorry? Rain. Rain. Like the weather? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it's my... Rain Leander, uh, I'm an engineer with Red Hat. Yeah, I, I don't want to talk about it okay. more, but I, I think it's better if people talk about themselves okay. than yeah. just, just the name. Or if you want to... Uh, uh, you can just say Rain. Yeah, okay, perfect. This, this is rain. <laughs> Here comes the rain. <laughs> sorry, sorry. We've got rain. <laughs> yeah, and um, I will show you 10 minutes in advance and 5 minutes in advance that uh, we are running out of time. And maybe we can be a minute or two more time, but not more. But yeah, yeah, it's fine. Perfect. You can start. Whiteboard in the D building, you can vote for a lightning talk this evening. And uh, in the afternoon, there will be spare tickets for an evening party also in the D building. So don't forget it. And don't forget to provide a <coughs> feedback after every talk. And now we have a talk about building your own private cloud. And uh, please welcome Rain. Hello, I'm uh, Rain, like the weather. I am a software engineer with Red Hat. I work on the OpenStack Triple O project as well as the RDO manager project. And if you don't understand what those are, we're going to tell you today. So, yay! Uh, one of the pieces of feedback I've received about this is it's very command line heavy in the installation. We're working on a script right now, so it's just two lines, but it's still command line. And last night, someone said, why aren't you doing install an RPM and then do a GUI installation? And so as this talk is happening, I would love to hear if you are plus one about that idea or something else entirely that I'm not even going to touch on. Uh, any kind of feedback like that, I would love, love, love to hear. This is not a workshop because the actual building of the developer's cloud using RDO Manager uh, takes much longer than 40 minutes. It's, uh, so what I'm going to do is give you a knowledge stump, a introduction about what OpenStack Triple O RDO RDO Manager is, so you kind of understand how it fits in the OpenStack uh, family, and, and then I'm going to give you links to the documentation, which are pretty verbose, uh, but very specific, so that you can go install your own cloud. Then I'm also going to give you a link to our quick start script, which is meant to replace the uh, seven pages of verbose instructions. And I would love, love, love for you to tweet at me at Brain Stance, because I used to dance. And, and tell me uh, what the script was like for you, if it was way too complicated, if you were frustrated by the images, because uh, they're up on a separate server, uh, anything, uh, send me your tweets. And also, I would love to hear any questions that we don't get to today feedback, et cetera, at, uh, at my Twitter handle as well. First, I would like to know who in here is a developer? Cool. Do we have any end users in here? Don't be scared. Oh, OK. Do we have any uh, contributors, active contributors to OpenStack? And out of the three of you, uh, is anyone a contributor to Triple O? 
Well, okay. <laughs> well, let me introduce you. Uh, so RDL Manager is an installation. It's, uh, it's a way to actually install your own cloud. It's uh, very, very new. Uh, well, uh, OpenStack and cloud computing are very, very new. It's even very, very, very newer. And it finally works. Yay. Uh, but there are bugs, too. So what we're doing is, is making a quick start, uh, but in order to understand Arduino Manager, I feel like it helps to understand what's OpenStack, what's Triple O, what's RDO, what's RDO Manager. If you want to learn more, rdoproject.org. So what is OpenStack? Um, it is a infrastructure as a service, and uh, all that means is it's a base platform to put uh, your platforms and then your applications on top of it. Um, why would you want to install your own cloud? Uh, maybe you are already an installer for a company or already a, a developer for a company that builds applications on the cloud, but for whatever reason uh, you would like your own private under your desk version of the cloud. Uh, you might have really bad connectivity to your company's uh, system around the world and want to limit that uh, issue so you can just see it privately. You may want to um, see what it's like to test on a private system and then push out. And so in that case, you probably want to work with OpenStack. No, wait, you definitely want to work with OpenStack. And OpenStack is a bunch of little projects under an umbrella. So when I say OpenStack, I'm not talking about one little push a button and it's done. I'm talking about an umbrella. It's, it's more like a, a bunch of sub-projects within a bigger. And this is the marketing version of OpenStack. It's very pretty. It looks like there is only three, four projects, if you count the dashboard, compute, networking, and storage. Uh, but it's very, very misleading because even within the storage projects, there's three Swift stuff, Gluster. And so what OpenStack actually looks like is more like this, uh, which is a little intimidating, but if you're intimidated by this, shut your eyes. I promise. Uh, Triple O makes it easier. Uh, you don't have to think about so much uh, these details, which are even a little stressful for me. How does Triple O fit into all these projects? Well, it's not even on this page because it's the installer. And so think of Triple O maybe being in one of the white spaces off by itself. There are lots of projects, actually, that aren't included in here. These are just the main ones. And so, so I say if this intimidates you, just think of OpenStack as an umbrella and then let it go. <laughs> so then what is OpenStack triple O? Uh, it's OpenStack on OpenStack. And there are um, two terms that are most important about that, and that is that you are building two clouds. And because there are two clouds, uh, we, we named one brilliantly under cloud and the other one brilliantly over cloud. Kind of helps to visualize that. I, I don't like left to right uh, visualization. I actually prefer under <laughs> and over. Uh, but if someone wants to make that graphic for me, I would be incredibly grateful. Uh, this is the simple, and again, we have a more complex version, but if you don't want to be stressed, just shut your eyes. It's cool. Uh, your under cloud deploys monitors and whatnot, your over cloud. And the reason you might choose to have this scenario is if you would like to use your under cloud as your testing site, you build an app, you, have, you actually test it within your under cloud, uh, work out the bugs, work out any 
confusion between the resources. Uh, let's say it works really well on a smaller system, but you put it on a larger flavor, which uh, might have the specs for a larger system, and suddenly your application explodes. You would test that all on your undercloud, which is not where the public or your end users access it. Once it works, you send it over to the over cloud. If you don't like the names of these, Undercloud and Overcloud, I've had some complaints. Uh, I would love suggestions, alternatives. It's open source, so, you know, we'll listen. Uh, the Undercloud is very specific in what the requirements are, uh, whereas your Overcloud, uh, the sky's the limit. So when you deploy your Overcloud, you would get more specific for what your application needs. Okay, so what is Spinal Stack? I haven't even said Spinal Stack yet today. Um, spinal Stack is a, was <laughs> a project that uh, we adopted some of the philosophy for our new manager. And that's why I'm bringing it up now, is it's kind of, if you're thinking of OpenStack and Triple O and RDO and RDO Manager as uh, brother and sister, husband and wife, but not at the same time, you might think of Spinal Stack as a best friend that kind of influences a couple of uh, aspects of RDO, RDO Manager. And these are the three points that we really liked about Spinal Stack. Um, automated health checks were already built in, which is a good thing because you would want to know if something was trailing. The resource matching, which is if I need XYZ in my environment, it looks at the resources available and tries to get you something as close as possible instead of something that's really different but then giving you just the limit of that. And then the support for Red Hat. Red Hat developers kind of like that. So then what is RDO? And get ready for a little bit of data view. RDO is open stack. But it's only for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, CentOS, Fedora. Uh, so everything that open stack is trying to do, uh, build the scalability, um, the instant access, et cetera, et cetera. It's the umbrella. And why do I specify RDO as well as RDO manager is because sometimes people get the two confused as one thing. But RDO is the big project, the umbrella, whereas RDO manager is the triple O equivalent within RDO. So again, get ready for more deja vu. RDO manager is triple O, but for Red Hat Enterprise Linux and Cinemax. Why not Fedora? We haven't got that far. <laughs> Uh, oh, oh, and spinal stack. Yay, cousin. So what are the specific environmental requirements for an RDO manager? Oh, RDO is Red Hat Deployed OpenStack. R-D-O. Uh, the environmental requirements are the bare metal machine has to fit uh, virtualization hardware extensions enabled at this time nested KVM which is uh, vert with an avert is not supported I'm sure you could get it to work if you want to hack on it a while uh, but it would get very very slow uh, one quad core of CPU uh, one quad core of CPU 12 gig free memory 120 gig disk space and that is because you're creating three virtual systems and each of them has their own requirements which is uh, 4 gigs of memory and 40 gigs of disk space. So as I said this is only for RHEL and CentOS at this time. Um, 7.1 for RHEL and 7.0 for CentOS. And now for the fun part. Uh, installation by hand, I'm not doing a demo, I'm just going through the documentation a little bit. Um, the link is way, way too long, so I employed Bitly. Um, 
What I'm going to go over today is only the environment preparation and the installation of the undercloud, not the actual deployment. Because when you get to the deployment phase, that's going to get really, really specific based on what you are working on. Uh, in the future, if you're interested, please tweet me and I will write up a specific document just for you. Yes, I just said that. Challenge thrown. Okay. So, this is the link. It's uh, Fedora Pages, RDO stuff, like really long link. Uh, first thing I would have you do is once you get to this site, uh, narrow down your operating system and, uh, and whatnot. This that I have outlined, just CentOS and just virtual, is the simplest version. Uh, you are more than welcome to use RHEL, but then you have to add satellite um, or portal for your registration. Uh, of course, you're allowed to use Ceph. Um, have fun with that. Uh, go storage. Uh, and then bare metal is if you have three, if you're installing on three systems, but then you have to be comfortable with the networking in between them and a couple of extra factors that, frankly, I just want to build a cloud and then start developing. So, so I uh, limit this. Um, we already went over the requirements. Uh, prepping the virtual environment, so you would install CentOS. You would make sure SSHD is running. You would create a non-root user, because if you uh, have all these done with, if you run these instructions as a root user, you might miss some error messages that root will just smash through and create anyway. And then you become that root user. Uh, you enable two uh, repos. One of them is Apple, and the other one is either CentOS or DeLorean. I can absolutely not speak to the DeLorean uh, uh, side of things. I've only ever tried with CentOS, but if you do that, please tweet at me. Let me know how it goes. And then you actually install instack dash undercloud. Um, there's a couple of, there's uh, just one extra, no, two, two extra steps that if you need to specialize in any way, you do that. Uh, and then in vert setup. And that actually just builds your three vert systems and whatnot. Then instead of going down and clicking next, which will take you off into how to prep a bare metal system, uh, three bare metal systems, click on installing the overcloud. So then you SSH into the system you just prepped as the non-root user. I cannot stress that enough because I've done that and you miss things. Uh, again, enable the two repos and uh, install Python triple O client and then open stack under cloud install. That's it. Uh, then yum update, I think. <laughs> yep, yum update. Oh, uh, and then open stack over cloud deploy templates. Now, the next bit about basic deployment, it goes into some detail. Um, it's a lot of pages and uh, way more than 40 minutes will allow, uh, but that's, that's basically it. It's pretty simple. So then we get to the installation by script, uh, which used to be strictly on GitHub, but now it's uh, working enough that we have put it on RDO project, which is exciting. And you run the script, which does everything I just said. It creates the non-root user. It, uh, it preps your environment. It makes sure uh, everything's running that should be. It, it goes out to the repos. It pulls down the packages. It, it does all the installation for you. Um, so you only have to run one line of script. And then after that, deploy the basic overcloud. And again, if you want me to help you with that, let me know. These are the instructions, which I think are 
Mm, still a little bit for both. But it's basically uh, one line. Lies, lies, and it's four lines. <laughs> uh, but then you can go back to the original upstream uh, docs. Um, I, I really hate the RDO uh, manager troubleshooting. It's like four things. And so much more could go wrong than those four things. Um, and after that, I say to you, uh, please get on IRC Freenode, uh, pound RDO, and ping me, I'm Leanderthal, or any one of my uh, friends that are also in there. Um, I'm also uh, at Rainstance. And uh, the, if you would like to test that script, um, hack on that script. And whatnot, please do. We are working on documentation right now, and I would love to hear from you guys what you would like to see about uh, building a basic cloud. And now I would love to hear your questions, comments, snide remarks about anything. And, and apparently, I get to reward you with a scarf if you have any questions or not. Any questions? Okay, let me ask you this. Would you, are you likely to use uh, RDO Manager to build your own cloud? Raise your hand. These five dollars. Okay, that one guy. Uh, no. <laughs> why not? Actually, we have tons of time. Um, I'm going to get you all comfortable talking. Uh, turn to the person to your left or right and introduce yourself. Tell them what you do, what your programming language is. <laughs> Two minutes. Go ahead. Come on, talk amongst yourself. Introduce yourself to someone you don't know. <laughs> Don't need or want that. 
that scenario, if you just want your own single cloud, um, I love Packstack, actually. Ooh, my name is Rain, I'm an RDO engineer, and I love Packstack. That wasn't recorded, right? <laughs> so, and there's, and there's actually, there's tons of other options as well. Um, and, and that's one of the beauties of installers is if it doesn't work, you try another one, another version uh, that might work better for you. Uh, apparently, I have uh, zero loyalty. If OpenStack installer requires zero gigabytes of RAM, I have a lot of big gigs. Was there a slide for my application to run? Great question. So the question was, um, my laptop has a minimal uh, hardware resource, and I need that for my application to run. Uh, why should I then uh, delegate another huge, actually rather large chunk of space just for OpenStack, specifically Triple O or Radio Manager? Uh, I would not run this on the same system that you are debbing your application. I don't do that. I have a laptop just for the cloud on the cloud. I use a, a separate, I use this laptop actually for my testing for applications and whatnot. And then when I'm ready to start testing it on the cloud, then I push it over to that system. Um, so this specifically assumes, great word, that you have an extra piece of hardware. <coughs> Any other questions? Comments? Then we are done a little bit early. Mm -hmm. I need to have coffee. <laughs> If you ask a question, come up for a scarf. If you don't already have one or you want an extra. Can you please uh, upload the slides on the USB? It would be the best, but whatever works. Okay. Yeah, and uh, like we have a special sticker for every speaker, so you can dis distinguish yourself. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice, though, but... Uh, I really don't have a use case. I like these cloud solutions and, and so, but I don't. I don't. Have, I can't justify to spend time on it. Yeah. I feel like it's it's for also people who are new to contributing as well to open stack and yeah. and whatnot. Uh, And, and, and also there are very specific use cases where a person is so remote that their access to the lab yeah. is too um, delayed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I agree. I, I also think it needs to be a lot simpler and uh, mindless to maintain. Um, and something that they're working on right now, right now, as we speak, is uh, live updates and the simplicity of maintaining. Um, so it's coming. I would and you're in the Bruno office. Shut up. <laughs> I, would, I would love to replace uh, the lab solution. We have a uh, Revan over and the... Uh, servers, the cluster is sitting in Brno, but the front end is uh, in Israel. So, <laughs> round trip <laughs> to yeah, Amsterdam, actually. Yes, exactly. It's really slow. It's yeah. really slow. Yeah. And when the VM is just running, just try always one. Sorry? Just try always one. <laughs> how, how, how long are you with Red Hat? <laughs> Two years. So, so we have an internal cloud named OS1. Yes. Um, that, that is currently. You're not supposed to tell a bunch of people, so you're, you're going to have to keep this a secret. Well, you, you don't have a login for this. Why <laughs> are uh, telling me to use it when I can't? Um, so there might be. <laughs> in some future, some cloud available somewhere. Yeah. So, yeah. and that might be named blah blah blah. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, Thanks thank for raising your hand. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your talk.
two side remarks, like RDO stands for nothing. Yeah, so, I know. So, I'm yeah, so, wearing... so it, I, I, I saw your talk in Brussels and I just... Well, so it's a repeat in question, what is it for? And actually stands for nothing. Oh, it's, so we're doing like GNU, basically. So, well, maybe yes, maybe no, nobody knows. Okay. I, I, I have no idea who came up with this okay. name. Okay. And uh, I have no idea who liked this name. But, well, and are, the, yeah. Are there any plans to change it, or are we just going to be like... <laughs> I have no idea. The other thing is we are currently in the process of dropping Fedora. So we are not supporting Fedora at all. Okay, cool. Reasons? Well, I mean, it's, it makes sense because they're, they're upstream and it's, it's a lot easier to make things stable after it's rel sandbox. Well, it's a bit hard since OpenStack is moving so fast and rel and CentOS is moving so slow, so and and we are pushing uh, new changes so fast in, into the project. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's uh, like we are trying to keep at least something stable, right? As, as the base, right? Um, that might be an idea why we are just dropping Fedora. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. So, so I would just drop the. Do you want to re, re, no, I, I already have you one. Sure? And you I, want two no. <laughs> <laughs> you want mine? <laughs> I, I know they are forcing you to hand out those. Yeah, I know. I'm like, <laughs> scarf, want a scarf? Want a scarf? Yes, I, I scarf? know. Oh, oh, that's fine. Want a scarf? Want a scarf? Want a scarf? In Rex, is, is it only for installing or also for maintaining, like patching and so on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can use it for maintenance, I deployments. The main, main benefit of fuel or something like that because you're only for installing and not just. And this one is also for yeah, maintaining. You'll you notice. You're asking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, technically, it is the goal to install, deploy, maintain. But right now, the stability is in the installer. Like, I can say, I can say installer, and you run into a lot less bugs. <laughs> Get out. <laughs>
Já jsem si říkal právě. Ups. Proč tam nevidím? se brát úplně na to, jo. Jinak tady teďka půjde na dva, teda ještě tam vlastně mm-hmm. tak jsem, ale ten neum, ne, nemluví česky. Yes. Ah, už se něco děje. Ah, to co vidím. <laughs> To je ono, to je ono, mají tam přestávku. Super, díky. Ještě, ještě zvuk musí. No je to, je to technika. No. Takže no a hodíme ho. Hodíme ho do... A ježdím mu pro hosty. Je tam něco nastartovat. To znamená, že mi to nemůžete vypnout. Jo, a vy potom přijdete a přehodíte to zpátky? No to přehodím zpátky. To by bylo špatné, aby si to nemůžete No právě. Kdyby, kdyby to moc křičilo, tak tady tímhle s tím se to dá upravit hlasitost. Dobře. 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 Dobře.
So, hello everybody, there was change in schedule. Uh, next presentation is going to be about network manager.